just before we start, I've actually managed to get a sponsor for this video. So thank you very much to R1GS for sponsoring it. So as we all know, sim rigs can be a bit dark and a bit depressing, but that's where R1GS comes in, able to spice up your sim rig. So R1GS are a fantastic new premium sticker brand for your sim rig. So there are currently eight sticker packs to choose from on their website that will be on screen now. Loads of different manufacturers and things you can choose from, but I went with the Ferrari sticker pack. Now I'm no Tafosi, and this hat really isn't helping with my case, but I just thought red would look cool because red is one of the primary colors on my sim rig. Now the stickers are mainly designed for Logitech G29 steering wheels, but they'll, they'll work with any, they are stickers. And I've got a G27, and as you can see from this footage, it fits on absolutely fine too, and voila, there you go, that's the finished product. I think it looks really, really good if I'm honest. The wheel looks so much cooler with all these new vibrant colours and that, the Ferrari logo slap bang in the middle, and just all around looks pretty cool. So if you'd like to pick up a sticker pack just like this one, or loads of other ones to choose from, make sure you click the first link in the description and use code MOTO for some money off as well. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sir Meerkat, and welcome back to the Moto Meerkat channel. So I've been wanting to make a video about the 2020 F1 liveries for quite some time now, ranking them from the most cool to the most bleh. But I didn't really want to do the standard style of just normal ranking, so I thought I'd get some of you Meerkats involved. I ask you on my Instagram and my Twitter, which if you're not following me already, make sure you check the links in the description. But yeah, I ask you guys to let me know what your rankings for the 2020 F1 livery would be. I collected those all together and then I averaged out their score to give me a ranking of what you guys would choose. Now if there's one thing I've taken away from this sort of experiment type thing is that we don't agree on many things. <laughs> the F1 community does not agree with each other. For example, I had for the Haas F1 livery, I had three people reply saying it was their favourite and I had another three people reply saying it was their least favourite. But here we go, here was your rankings for the 2020 liveries. So in 10th, you put the Mercedes clone, the Racing Point, with an average position of 6.92. In ninth is the, the standard Ferrari with a 6.54 average position. In eighth, the now Ineos branded Mercedes, which if you haven't seen my video on that, make sure you check it out in the one of the corners. So that had an average position of 6.42. In seventh is the Renault with a cute front end with an average position of 6.33. In sixth, the released from Rich Energy Haas car with a 6.29 average rating. In fifth, the beautiful Alfa Romeo with a 5.67 average position. In fourth, the same car that they've had every year, it's the Red Bull with a 5.17 average position. In third, the vibrantly orange papaya McLaren car with a 4.33 average position. In second, it's the Colgate car, the Williams, 3.71 position average. And in first, Tomo's not gonna like this. It was the insanely expensive clothing line Alpha Tauri with an average position of 3.58. So do you reckon this list that you guys have compiled, nothing on me, it's all on you, do you, do you think it's an accurate representation of your guys' thoughts and feelings or do you think it's a load of rubbish? And th this last is probably the case. But be sure to let me know in the comments what your ranking would be. Now let's move on to my rankings and see how they stack up against yours. I'm not gonna claim I'm some super cool freelance designer like Tomo F1 is. I'm just some bog standard F1 fan that's gonna give you his opinions and if you don't like him, then let me know in the comments. So in 10th place, we have Mercedes. Now this is two places lower than where you guys have actually put them in the list. But we can definitely agree that it's one of the worst. To be fair, the livery is actually really nice. I do like it and the, the Patronas integration into the livery does look good. But it's a bit boring and it's practically unchanged from the 2019 livery. The only thing that they've really changed on it was the addition of the Ineos logo. And I think that made it worse. The red just does not fit on the car at all. So that's why I put it in last. In ninth place, we have the red bull. So you guys had this in fourth, which I was amazed by. The livery is cool, but God, I am bored of it. It's the same year in, year out. And I know people have said before, we wouldn't have these classic liveries like the McLaren Marlboro because they had it for so long. And yes, I know, but 
the Red Bull is nice, but God, at least a little bit of a change would be nice. They get our hopes up every year with the test liveries, like, oh, look at this really, really cool thing we've made. And then they're like, oh no, but you can't have that for the actual season. We're gonna give you our livery back again. And I personally think that the OG Red Bull liveries are much better, like 2006, 2005 sort of time. They're absolutely packed. In eighth place, we've got the Ferrari. Now this is the third team of three on the list so far that are using the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. So we had it up, both of us had it at around the same point with you lot putting it ninth. I do really like the continued use of the matte paint on the Ferrari. I think it looks much better than the than the glossy look and the incorporation of the black into the car. So sort of uh, black logos and that rather than white, I think look a lot better. And the biggest change is actually the integration of the number. So on the 2019 car, we had sort of like a little black slither that then the number was in. And I thought that looked gross. But this year, they've just used white standard numbers and that font that they're using. Oh my God. Bellissimo. In seventh place, we have the Alpha Tauri. Now, this livery seems to be in the sort of Marmite category. You either love it or you hate it. With most of you clearly loving it as you put it at the top of your leaderboard. But I guess I'm the exception to this rule because I sort of put it lower mid-pack in my ranking. Now, before I get absolutely attacked in the comments, just let me have my reasoning. Now, I don't mind the navy. I think I agree with Tomo when he said he'd rather have black instead of navy. I do think that would look better, but I don't think it's awful. The design is just a bit dull, in my opinion, and the Alpha Tauri logo is far too overpowering. Now I know that it's like their whole new thing is they're trying to bring this Alpha Tauri brand and make it huge really quickly by giving it all this exposure, but it's just too big. And what saves this car from being further down the bottom of this leaderboard, in my opinion, is that red Honda logo. Damn, that is sexy. In sixth place, we have the Renault. Our choices seem to be pretty similar on this one with only one space difference. Now I reckon I would have had the black testing livery that they used much, much higher on the list. I think that looked really fit. But sadly, F1 fans, we never get what we want and they move back to being the bananas of the grid for the main season, which is actually quite poetic if you think about it. They are a bunch of bananas, Renault. And the livery is really complemented by their sleek new nose cone, which I think just looks bloody awesome. And to be fair, the yellow Renault is a classic and that's why it goes in sixth. Now in fifth place, we've got the Haas, probably the biggest change on the grid. So the Haas livery is another one that we relatively actually agree on. So as Haas lost their rich energy sponsorship sort of midway through 2019, we knew that for 2020 there was going to be a big switch up in colours because they're obviously not going to use the black and gold that was given to them by rich energy. And they decided to go back to their red, white and black roots from their 2018 liveries and previous. And I I, to be honest, I didn't really rate any of those, but this one, I think they've done a pretty good job. The colours flow super nicely, and they've used sort of more of the black and white, and use red as more of an accent, sort of bring out the nice bits of the car, which I think is done really nicely. In fourth place, we have the Alfa Romeo, and oh my god, this car is stunning. That shade of red is quite simply a masterpiece. And again, you lot seem to agree with me with only one space difference on the standings. Also, the Orland sponsorship that Kubica has brought to the car, I I think fits super nicely on the side pod, but I think the fading from white to red that's also on the side pod, it's a little bit sloppy, and I think they can tighten that up a little bit better. It's sort of just jagged bits of white and red going across that makes it merge, and I don't know how I feel about it, but otherwise, solid livery. In third place, we've got the racing point. Now this is a biggie. This one we do not agree on at all. You lot hated it, putting it dead last, and I don't think it deserves that kind of hate. Now I've made it no secret in previous videos that I absolutely adore the pink of the racing point being on the grid. And I'm going to seriously miss it when Aston Martin come in in uh, 2021 and give some British racing green or silver or whatever they use. I think it could look cool, but it's not quite the pink, is it? And from the front, I'm going to say this is the best looking car on the grid from the front. It looks incredible. The white, pink and blue integration just fits so nicely. But what lets this car down is the diagonal BWT logo on the side. Why did they do that? Why is it diagonal? It doesn't fit at all. If it was just simply horizontal down the side, banging, absolutely top tier, done, like so good. But why in God's name did they put it diagonally? But still, the pink just, just puts it up there, but God. And in second place, we have the McLaren car, another one with only one place difference between our standings. And god damn, and McLaren have done so much right with this car. They changed from orange to blue on the 2019 car using those sort of triangles design. It looked quite cool, but at the same time, it just 
didn't really work, did it? With the matte orange being dominantly placed in the middle of the car, surrounded by the sparkly blue on the top and the bottom, and also on the front wing. And the merging from the blue to the black on the rear of the car also just works really well. So I love it. GG McLaren. But they couldn't quite make it to first, and in first place, we have the Colgate car. It's only gone among the Williams. And I believe this is the first time Williams have won something in a while. Insert Williams slow meme here. Although the car does look a bit like a bottle of toothpaste, I always thought the Colgate design was pretty cool. The use of three primary colours, and in such lovely shades for that matter, just makes it instantly pop out from other cars that are on the grid. The outline of the blue around the nose cones allows the colour to really, really flow very, very nicely. And the curve of the red from the rear end plate all the way down the body of the car and down the front wing just works so well. The ABK beer and the Lavazza coffee sponsorship in the black text fit nicely. And honestly, I think the Rocket Phones design into the livery is the worst bit on the car. So I'm quite glad that it's going to be off the car for 2020. But hopefully Williams can raise the funds soon to go racing in 2020. Come on, Claire. We want to see your boys out there. Well, there we have it. There's both mine and yours, my subscribers, our roundup of the 2020 F1 liveries, and they're being ranked from most coolest to most bleh. Which did you prefer? My list or your list? Let me know in the poll somewhere above. Oh, I always forget which side it is. But be sure to like this video if you did enjoy. And let me know down in the comments where you would put each car in your own ranking. Be sure to subscribe to my channel as I make new motorsport content every Tuesday and every Friday. So realistically, you're not going to want to miss out on those. But again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see all of you in the later. Goodbye, guys.